Hey, welcome back. In this video today, I'm going to show you how I did the wheel alignment on the C3 Corvette chassis, but this process can apply to almost any uh, car that, that uh, is out there these days, and almost anyone can do it. So stay tuned. All right, the first check we're gonna do is uh, called camber, or how much does the tire lean in or out. Bubble level and a uh, board attached to it that holds the level away from the tire, um, right, but goes right to the wheel. And you just check how much that is. You wanna to try to set that straight up and down or, or plumb. Um, and you put shims in the upper control arm uh, and then just tighten those in. I'll show more on the shims later and also why the uh, shims are a little bit thicker in the back than the front. The rear, because we don't have a solid axle, the, there's also camber adjustment on the Corvette. These are little eccentric cams here that you uh, loosen that bolt and you crank that in and out to get the lean end of the rear tire. Uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, a lot of front wheel drive cars with non-live rear axles will have that as well. The second part that we uh, have to do is set up some parallel string lines. Uh, I just used four jack stands and a string and then a whole lot of back and forth measuring. You want to uh, be very careful and measure from a common point uh, on each axle and get these exactly the same side to side. They don't have to be the same front to back because some cars have a wider or narrower track in the front or rear and uh, the axle uh, configuration may be a little bit different so but you're not, you're not going to get the same reading necessarily front to back but side to side absolutely essential that you do that so here you can see with the camber already preset front and back uh, i've got the strings all set and ready to go and i'm ready to start measuring for toe in all right so toe in what you're doing is you're going to measure uh, from the edge of the wheel uh, at the height of the string and get a good measurement nice and careful about four and three eighths I guess there uh, so that's in the, the rear of the front wheel and then you go to the front and I've got a much larger measurement four and five eighths or more so that shows I've got a pretty severe toe in uh, you got to go and loosen up your uh, tie rod end and make some adjustments here under, underneath the car I'm just showing that the two tie rod ends it's good to check the relative length of the tie rod ends they should be about the same um, if they're not then you might have to make an adjustment to that and this is critical in getting the steering wheel straight so it's best to try to get the tie rod ends started um, as even as you can and then uh, i made the initial adjustment there while the car was up in the air so i'm putting this back down and um, anytime you make an adjustment, you have to, you know, wheel the car back and forth, get the chassis to settle. And of course, once you've done that, you've got to recheck your measurement on your strings and make any adjustment. Uh, it's just take your time to make sure that, um, you know, they're as even as they possibly can, because you're talking about measuring pretty small increments of toe in here. So here I'm just checking it again and measuring it. Um, I got it a little bit closer and now I've just got to go now that I have the tie rod ends loosened up just taking a vice grip and turning those um, there's a left hand and a right hand end so make sure you know which way do I rotate forward rotate back is uh, in or out um, and then just make some fine adjustments on one side and then go to the other side it's important to know if you make an adjustment on one side then you're changing the total toe in and if you don't do it evenly, then your steering wheel may not be straight. So here I'm just showing the steering wheel coupler um, in the Corvette. And that's up and down like that. So that means the steering wheel will be straight. And I've got equal measurement on both sides. So we're good to go. All right, back here at the left rear trailing arm. Take your wheel off first. Loosen, there's a car pin here. Take it, take it off, loosen this nut. And you'll see a giant carter pin here which is probably the biggest cotter pin you ever saw. Loosen that up from the inside and you should be able to pull that out. 
hold on to that. I don't know where you can buy that. Inside, what you're going to have on either side of the swing arms is a bunch of shims of different thicknesses like these. These are extra for when I pull the chassis apart. I didn't need all the ones that were in there because I put um, urethane bushings are a little wider than the spent bushings. Now these, I want to make sure I keep them sorted. I know that I need to tow in um, about a quarter inch on my trailing arm. So I'm pulling this set of shims out here on the inside, on the outside. On the inside, I've got another set. I'm gonna go around underneath. I get this set over here on the inside. Don't mix them up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to measure them and I'm going to move shims from the inside to the outside because I need to increase the toe in here. All right, so um, remember when I measured the um, toe out, what resulted in toe out in the rear wheel? I was about a quarter inch out. Uh, at the wheel edge so this measurement here was a quarter inch more than that so 16 inch wheel but 8 inch radius here so quarter inch that way the uh, swing arm mounts about 16 inches so about twice as far away if I want to even these measurements out to zero if I move this in an eighth that'll come out an eighth and that'll be the quarter inch that I need to get zero toe but because I'm putting the shims here about twice as far away, I figure the full quarter inch out here should give me the full eighth inch in and eighth inch out over here. So that's my first sort of trial and error guess. I'm gonna go measure up the shims and figure out um, the right combination uh, to change the, the total dimension a quarter inch out to in. All right, well, here's my fuzzy math here. You can read that. I measured the shims existing on one side were 0.315, the others to 305, total of 0.620. Add a quarter, subtract a quarter, which means I need 565 there and 055 there. I ended up taking um, Two larger shims from the outside to the inside, and one smaller shim from the inside to the outside. So, here's my 565-ish, and my 054. I was looking for 055, so that's pretty close. So, I'm going to give that a try. Um, I'm going to put the small shims in on the inside, try to force that uh, arm over, and. Um, try to put the shims in on the inside. All right, sorry about that. My work light and my memory card quit all at once. So I got the shims on the inside. I'm trying to slide that. You can see that that moved over. I'll put the larger ones in. Pardon my fat head. Should note on the older Corvettes, um, these had holes in them, not slots. So you actually had to take this bolt out to put them in. This is a much better design on this newer type uh, Corvette C3. So um, makes it much easier to do this. All right, so I've got those shims all in place. So again, it's the same number of shims that I had uh, here before. Um, I've just rearranged them. So now I'm gonna put this pin, cotter pin back in. On the other side. Come on, you can do it. There we go. I'm going to re 
tighten this nut here. I am not going to bend that cotter pin over. Uh, I'll put a cotter pin on this yet. I'm just going to tighten this down. Sort of like that. Um, put the wheel back on and go do the other side and then try it again. Right, so now I've got the toe in pretty much where I want it. I need to go back and, and check my uh, caster and camber angles again. Uh, remember, I rough set those first, then I did my toe in. Now I'm going back to this. Uh, double checked at wheel straight ahead. Uh, I have got good uh, camber still. I'm setting as close to zero as I can. You know, again, on these uh, chassis, you've got these shims that go between the uh, control arm rod and the, the, uh, the frame bracket. If you don't have a lot of these, you can make with washers of various thicknesses, a little C-shape that fits right over there. Um, I'm going to bring in a little closer here. Instead of stacking up washers, I like to make solid bars uh, like this um, to make the place of a couple washers and these span both the bolts. Now, I've got good camber, but caster is interesting because caster is the angle basically of the pivot. And the pivot is here from your ball joint upper to your lower. And you want that to be pointed backwards a little bit so the wheels will self-center. So you can see here, I have more spacers in the back than I have in the front. So on the other side too, a little bit more dramatic. Here I've also made large solid shims that go across both. But I've got greater spacing here uh, than here. And for both of these sides, it's about just under a quarter of an inch greater shim spacing in the back. So if I want to increase the angle of the tilt, I can put more shims in the back. And I can, if I want to keep that uh, camber angle, then I just move shims from the back side to the front side. So I have the same total number of shims on the wheel. Well, let's take a look at measuring caster and what that means. Again, as the wheel is straight up and down, that's fine. When I turn this wheel to the right, and about one full steering wheel rotation should do it. Now, I'm, if I'm turning left, I want this wheel to lean in a little bit to the turn because the, the chassis is going to roll out to the turn and force the uh, the caster back out. So, because of the, the caster angle, um, the wheel will go that way and lean in a little bit. So I should see very slight, which I do, because if I go back to straight, you can see I've got about an eighth of an inch or so um, of the tire leaning in. When I left turn, Now I'm left turning, car's going that way. I want this tire to lean out because, again, because of chassis roll, uh, it's going to want to pull that uh, camber back straight. So this tire should be leaning out now. As it is, because then if I pull this back straight, I've got pretty good, maybe three eighths of an inch of a space down there. So that tells me I've got a lean out there. Now, specification for these cars you might want to have is around three degrees of caster. I don't have the ability to, to measure that. Uh, I don't have a proper angle gauge, but 
you do the math and check that I think that's going to be about right but again this is just for rough setting this up so um, once you get this set where you want it go ahead and get your car on the road take it in for professional alignment and uh, keep your fingers crossed but you should be pretty close by just following this basic string and measuring tape method oh boy good boy Come here, buddy. Come here. 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 Basically set for zero toe in as close as I can measure it, and the uh, camber is still good. So the key thing here is every time that you make an adjustment uh, or raise the car up and down, rock the chassis back and forth, and double, triple check your string alignment um, before you take your measurements, and just be careful. Is it two or three iterations each time around? You never know when a hound dog is going to bump into your string and mess you up, right, buddy? We did a good job today, yes. Time for a cookie? Should we go get some cookies? Let's go get some cookies. Come on. 